We're here at Thailand's first supercharger station at Central World Mall in Bangkok. How did I get here? To find out, we need to rewind the clock nine and a half hours ago to 6 a.m. this morning in Chiang Mai. Teslas are known to be amazing road trip vehicles. Elon Musk's original roadster, the Starman, has taken an interplanetary trip more than five years ago around our solar system. Today, I'm here in Thailand, it's 6 a.m. and we're going to make a road trip all the way from Chiang Mai where we are today, down south, 700 kilometers or 430 miles to Bangkok. We're going to make this trip with Skip, who is Thailand's first Tesla Model Y owner. He got his car about now 15 months ago. And we're here in a very iconic part of Chiang Mai city. Right behind us, you see a wall. Skip, can you tell us a little bit more about this wall behind us? Sure, this is the, uh, the old gate to the city of Chiang Mai. It's in the middle of the city, a very popular tourist attraction. Um, this is where we're going to start our trip. It's approximately 700 kilometers to, Bang to Bangkok from here. Um, you know, we're going to be utilizing the autopilot for the most part of this trip. It's going to be an, en an enjoyable drive and it's going to be a fun ride. So looking, looking forward to it. Thank you for bringing me on this road trip, Skip. As you notice, I don't have any bags with me because all that I brought with me for my one week trip to Thailand is in the front of Skip's Model Y. Teslas do not have an engine, which creates more space. Let's check out the front. So you see down here, I've got my duffel bag and I've got a backpack with a SpaceX tag as well. That's all I have. That's all I carried in me for my trip. And the front on the Model Y is super spacious. Perfect for road trips. All I need is up front over here. So now we're going to head into the front seats and begin our road trip. See you inside. I'm here in the front seat of Skip's Model Y and Skip's going to walk us through how we're making this trip. Yeah, basically right behind us is the uh, gate to the city of Chiang Mai. Um, we're starting from here. The entire trip itself is going to take about 700 kilometers, but um, obviously we can't go all the way to, to Bangkok um, on one charge. We are starting at 407 kilometers here and our first um, charging station is about 443 kilometers. Um, so it's going to take us about four hours to get there. Um, unfortunately, we can't use the in-car navigation because this is a imported vehicle. It's not the official car, so we can't utilize the navigation, but I do use my, my Google Maps here. And the way that I, um, how I know which charging stations are where is based on just going through the, the main app that I use is PTT, which is a very popular gas station in Thailand, and they have the most uh, charging stations. So I go into the app itself and basically save all of those locations the charging stations into my Google map as favorites. So when I pull up my Google maps, I can see all of them uh, within Google maps itself and I can select which uh, station I want to go to. I'm excited to begin this trip. I hope you are as well. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Now, let's hit it. Six hundred meters. Slight right. We just left Chiang Mai City. We're on the freeway now. And we're gonna hear from Skip, who's been a Tesla owner for more than ten years. He's owned the Model S, the Model 3 and the Model Y in the US before coming to Thailand. To hear what's the difference between autopilot in the US and Thailand, as well as walk us through how to use autopilot and any watch outs we should have as drivers. Yeah, um, so basically I, I have just the, the basic autopilot here. Um, you know, obviously there's different levels um, of features that you can use with basic versus enhanced versus full self driving. Um, with basic autopilot, um, the way to activate it is, you know, basically you get into your lane, you uh, push this down twice, you can hear that ding. Everything that your lane, the lines will um, turn blue. That basically will tell you that you are now in autopilot. 
Uh, as you can see, the speed right now, the cruising speed is set at 93 kilometers. Obviously, I can change it up and down by using this, this knob to scroll up. If I scroll uh, quickly, it will go up by 5. If I do it slowly, it will go up or down by 1 kilometers per hour. Um, and as you can see here, this is one big difference in autopilot, basic autopilot versus enhanced autopilot. The car will not automatic will not automatically change lane if there is a slower vehicle in front of you. Uh, even though I set the speed at 98 right now kilometers, the current speed is going at 77 or so, 76, and it will not change lane. So the only way I can change lane is to. At 600 meters. Uh, disengage the autopilot straight. and then re-engage it again once I'm in the lane that I want to go in. Um, so here I'll show you. I'll wait until this car passes us and we'll change lane. Um, but while we're waiting, um, the autopilot is, is really great in, in Thailand versus uh, the US. Straight. It's basically the same thing. Um, you know, the same features, the same software, basically. Obviously the only difference is in the traffic itself in the US, the roads are much more organized, uh, wide open, cars drive, uh, the people follow the rules much better um, in the US versus in Thailand you have motorcycles weaving through in and out uh, all the time. Um, so you just have to be careful sometimes, you know, if, if you get cars cutting in front of you, um, you know, the car may, you know, slam on the brake, but I haven't seen a whole lot of that uh, recently, um, used to do that. Here we go, I'll disengage to go into the faster lane. So we can get away from this In 800 meters. vehicle. Keep right at the fort. I'll set the speed to 100 kilometers. And uh, yeah. And that's it. A lot of EV owners notice that when they drive too fast, their range goes down really quickly, it drains their battery, stay of charge quickly. What's the, in your experience, what's the optimal speed to when making a road trip like this? Um, I've seen that about 100 kilometers, 110 or so, it is a very optimal speed. Um, you know, even also utilizing the air conditioning going at this speed, you should mostly get the range that, that you expect. And also you can look at the, uh, the energy app here as well, that if we are going at this speed, the car will tell you what meters. your projected range will Continue be. Straight. Um, you can also see another graph here. It basically shows you, you know, if you're continuing at this speed, um, you know, how how much range you'll have left by the time you uh, reach your destination. This is really cool. All information available in the driver's fingertips. The new energy app has so much more data. Tesla is a very data-driven company and also empower owners and drivers with the same information to help us plan and make better road trips. The skip, would this be a free stretch of freeway all the way down until our next stop? Uh, pretty much, yep. It's going to be uh, pretty much uh, straight all the way. Um, yeah, still gonna take us another 30 hours and 50 minutes or so. And uh, so right here is actually the, the gas station that uh, PTT station is one of the most popular one in Thailand, which has all of the, uh, I think that right now they're really, really ramping up the installation of charging stations and all of their gas station. I've seen in Bangkok even some of the smaller gas stations, some of the older gas stations, they're installing charging stations there as well. So, and I think I just saw an article in the news recently um, that they were saying um, they are going to be investing heavily because they noticed that that they know that they want to get more revenue out of you know people charging their EVs in the future. That's definitely going to happen with Tesla's official launch in Thailand just last month. And the supercharger network is going to be a good way to also incentivize local charging networks to do better. The superchargers are such a seamless experience. We're going to land at the Central World Supercharger Station at the end of this trip. A common question a lot of our viewers are asking Skip, 
powers the ride comfort, powers the suspension in road trips. So the suspension for the Model Y for the, the vehicle that I have here, I, I would have to admit that it's a little stiffer uh, than the one that I had in, in the US. But from what I've heard though, from some of the reviews that I've seen, for the official Model Ys uh, that Tesla brought into Thailand, the suspension is a lot better than this vehicle. Uh, I've seen people saying, wow, they drove the, the great market vehicle and when they drove the Tesla official vehicle for, for Thailand, it's night and day, uh, so it's a lot softer. The Tesla vehicles like the Model 3 and Model Y, they've been around for years. They may look very similar outside, but when you drive it, actually most of the components, most of the parts are constantly being improved. So you can sign up for a test drive for the Model 3 and Model Y with Tesla Thailand in Bangkok. I'll put a link down in the video description. I hope myself as well to test drive one of the newer Model 3s. One thing you'll notice as well, uh, one, um, you know, there's a something called the nagging uh, basically uh, within autopilot if you don't touch or if you don't give any feedback to the steering wheel um, the autopilot is going to more or less trying to ensure that you're still awake and you know you're not falling asleep or anything so it will start flashing blue light um, and if you don't give any feedback to the steering wheel after that i think it'll just keep on flashing faster and faster and then until it will start beeping as well to ensure that you are currently in control and engaged and, and alert. That's a good safety feature, especially for many who, unlike Skip, who's been driving a Tesla for 10 years, many may be new and you don't want to put too much trust in it. It is a driver assistance, not a driver replacement. <laughs> We're now 200 kilometers into our trip. Around two hours have passed. It's now 8.30 a.m. here, local time in Thailand. And we've been driving an autopilot for the whole time, mostly, except when we had to change lanes or when there were stops. Skip, how safe do you feel with autopilot here? Yeah, I feel completely safe, uh, you know, and it's also very, very relaxing to drive an autopilot. Uh, once you have experienced autopilot, you're not gonna ever want to drive anything yeah, long distance and anything else other than autopilot. It really gives you the flexibility to eat, um, you know, with 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 no, knowing that the car is, is you know driving itself and it's keeping you safe, and um, it's very comfortable. Uh, by the time you reach your destination, you're not going to feel tired because you're you're able to relax and you don't have to really pay too much attention to to, to the traffic. Although you you still need to make sure that. Uh, you know, you're aware of your surroundings because things do happen. Autopilot is not perfect, but uh, of all of the times that I've driven in autopilot uh, in the U.S. and in Thailand, I've never had uh, any accidents so far. So thank God. I do things really relaxing. These are the grapes from yesterday's video in the vineyard. Seedless, crunchy, really fresh. Now I also noticed that Skip, you have your foot on the accelerator here. Yeah, that's uh, just in case, uh, like I said, things do happen. Um, so you need to be ready uh, to take over from autopilot. Uh, if something was to happen, uh, you just need to, to be aware and be ready to, to take over. So that's a good safety practice. Autopilot is Tesla's version of traffic aware cruise control. You technically don't need your foot on the accelerator. The car continues moving. Having it there on standby just keeps us safe to react to things. Cars swerving to our lane, unintended obstacles, autopilot of catching something in rare occasions. We're getting pretty close to our first and only charging stop for this road trip. So Skip's gonna walk us through how we charge and what we're doing here very shortly. See the 
two EV chargers over there. This is actually a gas station. And he has EV chargers. Can you tell us a little bit more about this place? Yeah, so um, as you can see at the sign over there, um, actually they're advertising EV charging station by e Elex, which is I think it's one of the local Thai power company, uh, eGap. Um, yeah, basically this charging station um, has two ports. Uh, one I think you can do reservation and another one is for walk-in. Uh, the speed here, I believe, is up to 120. Um, so there's an app that I can use. Sorry, right here real quick. Alexa is the app. Um, you know, you just go up. You basically go up to the charging station and scan and, you know, pull out the plug and plug it into the Tesla. So basically, uh, you open up this app, and as you can see here, the location of the car, um, you know, is showing that uh, there is charging station right there. Basically, we would tap on this um, scan QR code, go up to the station, um, scan, pull out the plug, and plug it into a Tesla. Okay, let's see how that works. Right. Follow me. Here we go. We're just going to scan. Boom. It's going to process. Uh, basically, you have to plug the plug. Plug it in. Continue. Start to charge. That's it. As we're waiting for the car to charge, I'm going to ask him a couple of questions as we sit in his trunk. Skip, this is our first and only charging stop from Chiang Mai to Bangkok. Right. Yeah. That's all we need. Correct. That's all we need. Uh, it's about 700 kilometers from Chiang Mai. Uh, it was 343 from there to here. So we just need another 350 or so to Bangkok. That's pretty impressive. Is there peak and non-peak charging in Thailand? There are, but for this particular charging station, uh, there isn't. But for PTT gas station, uh, they do they do have peak and off-peak, and peak starting from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. And anything outside of that is off-peak. The rate for off-peak is 4.5 baht uh, per kilowatt, and then the uh, peak would be 7.5 uh, baht. For a road trip like this, 700 kilometers or 430 miles, how much would we typically be spending on charging? Uh, if I stop just once like this, it's only about 250 baht or so, uh, definitely less than 300 baht. 250 baht, roughly in US dollars, that would be? Uh, less than $10, about uh, 8 to $9. Dollars. Less than 10 US dollars for a road trip like that, that's pretty insane. And our next trip, our next stop would be in Bangkok, which is going to be a free supercharging session. Yes, superchargers are free for now in Thailand. So if you're a Tesla owner, maximize it. That's Not right. just in Thailand, if you're a Tesla owner in Malaysia or Singapore, drive up to Central World, free charging exactly. for now. Limited time only. It's like how in Singapore, the charging was free for a couple of months before Tesla started charging for it. So from 1 to 10, 1 being terrible, 10, excellent. How will you rate Thailand's public EV charging infrastructure today? I say almost a 10. Uh, you know, there, there are plenty of charging stations in Thailand. Um, you know, I've had this car for about a year and a half. I've already put in 40,000 uh, 40, kilometers. Uh, a lot of that is driving back between Bangkok and, and, and Chiang Mai, as well as all the way going to the southern part of Thailand. Uh, I've had no issues. Um, you know, Again, on top of um, utilizing the autopilot, it's a it's a very enjoyable way to, to drive in Thailand long distance. The charging infrastructure is good. Yep. We actually have a BYD Eto3 next to us 
charging by our side. With Tesla officially launching in Thailand, they're going to have multiple supercharger stations throughout the country. So it's only going to get better from here. Talking about the car being charged and the car being re being fed, it's, I think it's our turn. As uh, Skip mentioned, I also want to get some coffee, get some food as well. So we're going to head inside, get some food. We just got our drinks. We're more than halfway done. Yep. So cheers to that. Cheers. Yeah, that was quick. How do you monitor the state of charge while we're sitting here in the cafe, Skip? Yeah, so basically, we, I can look at the Tesla app and, you know, it shows me the state of charge, how much more time is left. Um, so we can actually show you the camera, state of charge over here, as you see in the, in the middle of the screen, down here. Yeah, so we're uh, at 327 kilometers and we just need actually 316. So I just need to add uh, another 20 or so as a buffer and yeah. then we should be able to go in 5 to 10 minutes. So we're 316 kilometers away from Bangkok. I want to talk about the car that we're riding in, the Model Y. Skip, mm -hmm. you own the Model S, the Model 3, the Model Y. How would you rate the Model Y's uh, family road trip vehicle? Uh, it's very roomy. You know, I like the headroom. I like the, the fact that it's very high up, so it gives you good visibility on the road. Um, from a space standpoint, uh, it's got a lot of space. Um, especially, you know, when I when I moved to Chiang Mai from Bangkok, I was able to pack a lot of stuff into the car. There's the front, there's the trunk, lots of space underneath in the back seat as well. You can fold the seat down. I had a cat at the time, so I was able to bring my cat and all of the stuff that I wanted to move with me. Um, so yeah, it's a good road trip uh, vehicle. It's good for moving as well. Um, in the future, you know, I'm sure if Tesla brings in the uh, the roof rack, the roof, the roof rack, you know, you'll be able to store a lot more stuff um, as you're going on the road trips. Our friends in the U.S. You've been living in the U.S. for many years, so we have the Model X there, which is an even bigger SUV. There are rumors that the Model S and X may come to Thailand by the end of this year. So some owners are wondering if I have a family. Skip. Should I just wait for the Model X or is the Model Y good enough? Uh, well, the Model X has higher, you know, kind of a little bit more luxury. Um, there's the screen in the back seat as well for your little ones, right? Um, it really depends on the needs of the uh, individuals, but, um, you know, if you can't wait, I say go for the Y. Um, but if you want to wait, uh, the X is a great car as well. It's very roomy. There's a lot more luxury to it. And, um, you know, it's got the, the gold wing door that, you know, for those who like to uh, be a little flashy when you go to different malls and whatnot, you can show the car kind of opening up the doors. <laughs> That's right. If you like the bling, you can only get it from the Model X Falcon wing doors. Yep. And the Model Y is a good deal here in Thailand, 1.9 million baht. That's what it starts with. By the time they launch the refresh S and X here, it may be probably onwards of 4 million baht. Mm -hmm. So double the price. You make the call, what's right for you. The Model Y today is a great car. I'm enjoying it so far. So we're going to finish our drinks, wait a couple more minutes, and we'll see you back inside our Tesla. Both of us are recharged, the car is recharged, so let's head off. Alright, so we'll just unplug the car, unlock the, the charging port, use the app to unlock, it turns white, just pull it out, Lock it back in and then we're ready to go. Now if you look around us, you may have noticed that today it's actually quite hazy. That's because I think the air pollution level is around 150 PSI recently in parts of Thailand. One of the cool features of the Model Y is the bioweapon defense mode, which clears up the air. Huge HEPA filter in the Model Y. So Skip, can you walk us through how do we activate this? Sure. Yeah, so basically the AC is already on here. Basically what you do is just slide up the AC or the climate control. Uh, as you can see here, we have the airflow, which direction it's going to. The bio defense mode is right here. All you need to do is just press on it. And now it's cleaning the, the airflow within the, uh, the cabin. 
Um, typically, what I do in, when I leave in Chiang Mai, <clears throat> I would act, actually activate the bio defense mode before I get into the car so that it clears it up. And then I'll leave it on for a minute or two before um, going back to the normal uh, AC. So, what I'm hearing, Skip, is we turn it on as we get into the car, then we can turn it back to normal aircon so that we don't have to use too much of the climate control. Even though it's a small part of electric energy, every bit counts. So we're ready to head off on the second half of our trip to Bangkok. See you on the road. Welcome to Bangkok. It's been at least four years since I've been back here. So it's nostalgia for me. I used to live in Bangkok for almost three years, almost more than a decade ago. So looking forward to see many friends here in the next three days. Another 15 minutes, 20, 20 minutes to Central World Bangkok. Enjoy the ride. We're pretty close to Central World. Skip's going to show us how to check whether superchargers are available on the Tesla computer. Yep. So basically on the navigation, um, you can kind of look up the nearest um, supercharger. And what's on there is um, some details regarding that particular supercharger. And it shows that we have five stalls that are available. And then also the speed of charging um, there as well. So there's a total of nine stalls and five are available. Right here on the bottom also shows, you know, the different amenities that are available. Um, I think that's restroom, restaurant, coffee, hotel, and shopping. Um, as you can see, the distance is about 1.2 kilometers. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get there hopefully within the next five minutes or so. We are pretty close by. In the future, as Tesla opens up more superchargers, you'll see more of them on the map. They will also start showing other non-Tesla chargers as well. So all you need to do is just click on the different lightning icons for different speed. 1, 2 and 3. 3 being the fastest ones. We're here at Central World. We finally made it. It's been nine and a half hours. It's now 3.40 p.m. Thailand time and we've got 41 kilometers state of charge as you can see clearly need some supercharger love here you can see the huge mall right above us skip this is your first time to central world supercharger exactly yeah. there's another road
We made it to the Tesla supercharger here at Central World. Nine and a half hour journey. Yeah. How do you feel, Skip? Uh, great, you know, uh, with the use of again autopilot, um, not that tired at all. And I'm glad to be back in Bangkok again using the supercharger for the first time. First time supercharging. Before we do that, let's take a look at the energy app and see what insights it has for us. Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, the average of the drive, at least in the last 50 kilometers or so, was uh, averaging around 130, which is a uh, good standard, a uh, good average. Um, I think the car, the um, the typical average is 140. Um, also here we can see since last charge, we have driven 317 kilometers. And... Um, yeah, and um, with the average of 143 watt hour uh, per kilometer, um, right at average for the entire trip. I think so, now is a good time to also show the data on like climate and just yeah. use data to do some myth busters. How much does climate use? Climate use about additional uh, 39.1 kilometers. Um, so it does have some impact. It can definitely be optimized. Yeah. I know that I've driven uh, a little bit faster on this uh, segment of the trip. So, so we use up a lot more energy as well. This has been a very exciting journey. Now Skip's going to show us just how much easier it is charging on a Tesla supercharger. Again, this is Skip's first time doing it here in Thailand. Should Let's be, follow him. Should be plug and play. Let's go. And there we go. First time supercharging here in Central World Mall Supercharger. There are nine stalls all around us. Let's take a look around and see what models we have all around us. Yeah. Oh, it's already up to um, 135, 170 max, almost, pretty much. That is really fast. So let's do, uh, do a short walking tour around the supercharger station and maybe Skip can give us a little bit of commentary on what he sees. Check out the new, uh, the other red Model Y here as well. <laughs> Model Y. Yeah, red is a beautiful color. You can tell its performance by the carbon fiber spoilers behind us. The red calipers and the dual motto, the red line mini fit. So that's a performance bottle Y. Yeah, so as we can see, we have nine stall um, occupied by all Model Y. Very, uh, very popular. Um, so this is the first um, level of parking underneath the, uh, the mall. Right over there, you can take the escalator up to the mall. Um, as soon as you get up there, there's a Starbucks and the rest of the mall up there. Uh, it's a very convenient location for uh, Tesla drivers. Um, I believe that this particular location, the mall, the central mall also has um, other charging stalls as well that um, non-Teslas can park here as well and charge. One really cool thing about this supercharger station and probably all superchargers for now in Thailand is that superchargers are Free! Exactly, free! Yeah. Who doesn't like free stuff, right? Free superchargers is a deal you can't ignore. So if you're an early adopter, you're an early pioneer, that's a huge benefit. Look at all these model Ys down here. Skip, thank you for an amazing road trip. For those who still have doubts that EVs can be used for road trips in Thailand, what do you have to say to them? There's absolutely no excuse for you not to own an EV. Because as you can see, we made it all the way from Chiang Mai to Bangkok with just one stop, one. And you know, in the future, as the range increases, 
Maybe we could make this one trip, you know, the entire trip without supercharging. So it's really doable. Um, I've gone northern part of Thailand all the way to the southern part, and hopefully in the future all the way to Singapore eventually. That's right. Skip has driven almost 42,000 kilometers on this Model Y, but he's owned Teslas for 10 years. So he's got multiple Teslas from S, 3, Y. Battery technology is getting better. Range is getting longer. You see a supercharger here, Titan's first of many to come. And not just Tesla superchargers, but so many other companies are expanding the network. If you live at home, you can also have home charging. Let us know what questions we have for Skip and I about this road trip from Chiang Mai to Bangkok. We hope you enjoyed this and we hope this inspires you to make your own road trips. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. This has been a very eye-opening road trip for me. It's my first road trip that's more than nine hours long. So stay tuned because I'll be taking an eight-day FSD beta road trip on the Model Y across California in the first week of June. Happy travels.